Buckle up guys, gals, and non-binary pals. In this video, I'll be talking about the history of transgender representation in film and television. Before I start, I'm going to go over some terms, which I'll be using pretty frequently throughout this video. When someone is transgender, they do not identify as the gender they were assigned at birth. When someone is cisgender, they do identify as the gender they are assigned at birth. A transgender man is someone who identifies as male, and a transgender woman is someone who identifies as female. A non-binary person doesn't identify as a man or a woman. These words are very important for this video, so let's get on with it. In 2012, the LGBT media organization GLAAD catalogued 102 episodes of scripted television containing transgender characters since 2002. The statistics found that 54% were categorized as negative representation and only 12% were considered groundbreaking. The most common profession they were depicted as were sex workers, which a fifth of all characters were depicted as. Anti-transgender slurs, language and dialogue was present at least 61% of the time. With this information, we can see why a lot of transgender people are discriminated against in real life. Subconsciously, cisgender people think transgender people are villains, or that it is okay to make a trans person a victim. Transgender representation is often used for the shock factor. An example of this is in The Crying Game, where as Fergus begins to disrobe Dill, a transgender woman, in her bedroom, he gets on his knees expecting to find female genitalia, and instead it reveals a penis. He twists away in disgust, vomits, and then hits her. Unfortunately, this isn't the only time a trans woman has been reduced to comedic or grotesque twists. Oh this trend God! continued throughout the 90s and well into the 2000s. With the little Thank trans you. representation hey, on the screen, they were always a subject of comedy or villainy. Yeah. This makes it oh, easier fuck. to hate trans people, which unfortunately makes it easier for a parent to turn their backs on a transgender child. It makes it easy to joke about a person's identity and not expect any negative repercussions, because on the screen it's okay. Unfortunately, when you are transgender, finding work in any industry is a struggle, especially in the media industry. This is because when Hollywood looks at us, they don't see us as a regular person. They don't see our potential. The following is a quote from an accomplished trans actress. If we want access to work, we either have to be a prostitute, a mistress, a self-hating trans person, dead or dying of AIDS, or willing to be ridiculed for comedic value. You would think this quote would have come from the early 2000s, just going with the trend that started in the 90s. But it was from 2018, just last year, when we are supposedly in the peak of acceptance. In 2013, GLAAD published a list of transgender characters that changed the screen. While this sounds hopeful, I looked a little deeper into it. I took away the documentary films and reality TV shows and found that 75% of these influential transgender characters were played by cisgender people. This is a major issue as a lot of transgender actors find it hard to get a job unless the character themselves is a trans. Most trans actors are not even allowed to audition for the role of a cisgender person. Trans people working in the media have to pave our own way, write our own projects, self-produce them and star in them. This is because if we even try to intermingle cisgender society within our works, we're typically turned away. As a transgender man, it is hard for me to find a character that I relate to. As I've been researching for this video, I found that when I type transgender representation on the screen in Google, most articles featured transgender women. I clicked on one Wikipedia link that had a list of transgender characters in film. Out of 82 films, only 15 of them were transgender male characters. This has personally made my life more difficult. When I first came out as trans, a lot of people compared my life experience to that of a trans woman. My parents couldn't wrap their heads around it and I couldn't give them a good example to watch. Another form of transgender representation which has appeared in recent years is a trans character who is there purely to be a trans character. 
They are there to educate. They are there to be a poster person and kind of bait other transgender people to watch their show or film. The representation trans people like myself crave isn't that huge. We want your average people. You see, in many film or television episodes, background characters are mostly white, thin, cisgender people. And while this may seem like nothing, it confirms biases about the makeup of society. So trans people aren't expected to exist in the average person's life. We want them to be strong. We want them to have a great personality, and we want them to have interests that aren't just explaining what it means to be transgender. The Netflix show The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina has arguably the best representation of a transgender character. Theo Putnam is the first character I have been able to relate to. He's played by non-binary actor Lachlan Watson, which is a huge step in the right direction. He declares that he feels power in being called male pronouns. I feel good when people call me he and young fellow, like Roz's grandma did. I can't keep going on as a girl anymore. I just can't. Theo has helped me come out to many people I've just met. I say the words, I'm a trans guy, and people say, oh, like Theo, this makes me feel safe. And I know I'm not the only one. I could spend hours upon hours talking about why a positive, accurate transgender representation is important. There are just so many ways that representation can help someone. As a transgender guy who grew up in a suburban area and went to a Catholic school. I didn't find out what being transgender really meant until I was in my final year of school, and I often felt isolated. Representation, in a way, can give you permission to be yourself. It can show you the way out of a dark place. It can help people better understand what you're going through and how to support you. The right representation can show transgender people that you can be more than just a statistic. You can be more than a joke, you can be more than a sex worker, a victim, and you can exist in real life.